What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics. Today, we got a Regina Spector reaction to her album, Soviet Kitsch, brought to us by friend, longtime supporter, and patron of the channel, Shane. Appreciate you, Shane. Appreciate all the patrons who make this thing go. If you guys support us anyway, check out the Patreon link below or the patron link on the end screen. We make videos every single day. That is a lot of man hours. I don't know anything about Regina Spector except for the name. Um, so let's dive into a little bit about her and a little bit about this album. Regina is a Russian-American singer, songwriter, and pianist. After self-releasing her first three records and gaining popularity in New York City's independent music scenes, particularly the anti-folk scene centered on New York City's East Village, Spectre signed with Sire Records in 2004 and began achieving greater mainstream recognition. If you want to know what anti-folk is, I never even heard of it, right? It's a musical genre that promotes songwriting over technique, and personality over polish. Some see it as the evolution of folk, others as a combination on punk and folk. This album is the major label debut and third album. It was originally released on Shoplifter Records in May of 2003, but was reissued in August of 2004 when she signed with Sire Records. Title was drawn from Milan Kundera's expression for the aesthetics of Stalinistic style communism. A theme in his book, The Unbearable Lightness of Being. But you all right, guys already knew that, right? Metacritic 72 out of 100, Pitchfork 6.8 out of 10. Now in 2009, the album was included in Enemy's list of 100 greatest albums of the decade, but critics are kind of all over the place on this one, probably middle of the road, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything, right? If it's your first time joining us, the music will not be in the video, but it will be in a Vimeo link below. Thanks again, Shane. We'll go to the first track you see it below, Ode to Divorce. I don't really have anything on these songs, so we'll let them unfold. We'll figure them out afterwards. Ode to Divorce. You hear that heartbeat at the start at the end, but when it gets quiet in the song, you can hear it's kind of running throughout. It's interesting because an ode, you know, you write an ode to something kind of as a, I don't know, as a love to it, right? Or a, as a uh, adoration to it. So Ode to Divorce is an interesting way to title the song. And she's basically going through, I tell about when, you know, she's eating, she's not hungry, it's tasteless. So break me to small parts, let's go in small doses. Like you might... Make a dollar, I'm inside your mouth now, behind your tonsils, peeking over your molars, a little bit of strange uh, way to illustrate that. But you're talking to her now, and so, then I need your money, it'll help me, I need your car, but then she flips right in the middle of this verse, right? And I need your love. So you get divorced, and like all of a sudden the assets are split, and someone usually ends up with the short end of the stick on that. So she's asking for that, but then all of a sudden she's really just wants his love, she wants him back. So once you help a brother out, and, uh, yeah, this is kind of how it, it goes through. I do see the anti-folk, because I've read a lot about anti-folk, of using instruments that maybe don't quite fit. And it's weird with Regina, because if you dig into her background, she's got a tremendous like classical background, composing music, piano, ex excellent piano player. Like, she's actually a like really, really astute musician, so to choose a style is an interesting choice, but uh, I did like the song. Let's go to the second track, Poor Little Rich Boy. Poor Little Rich Boy. Now, a couple of things I researched said that this was a song about Julian Casablanca, of course, the lead singer of The Strokes. He's also the son of a modeling agent creator, the supermodel John Casablanca. So he had a privileged upbringing as a little rich boy, although his parents divorced when he was eight. His mom married somebody else. But then it says Regina dated or at least had a flirtation with him in 0304 when she opened for the band on the Room on Fire tour. They collaborated on 2004's Modern Girls and Old Fashioned Men. Now, she did open for him. They did collaborate. I don't know, man, if they had a relationship. And I don't know if this song's about that because I could find that in a few places. But sometimes what happens is you got to watch it. One source will report something and then the other sources just pick that up. And then all of a sudden it just gets everywhere. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's that's what this is about. And it's not necessarily so because she never said that. But the song itself, I did not dig the instrumentation. And I might be skewed because I read a ton of reviews on this, right? I read a ton of stuff on this because it's hard to find stuff. So once you do, you kind of go down the rabbit hole, especially since I don't know anything about her. And a lot of them said it was just kind of trying too hard on the anti-folk. And that's what I felt like here. I felt like she was trying to use sounds and things that didn't really fit. But poor little rich boy, all the couples have gone. You wish that they had and you want to be alone. But they want to kiss and they got homes on their own. And then, of course, you don't have your girlfriend, you don't have your girlfriend, and you think that you should, but she thinks that she's fat, but she isn't, but you don't love her anyway, and you don't love your mother, and you know that you should, and you wish that you would, but you don't anyway. And then the poor little rich boy, all the world is okay, the water runs off your skin, and down to the drain, you're reading Fitzgerald, F. Scott Fitzgerald, you're reading him away, they're both super smart and drinking in the cafe, so you're reading that uh, 
You're, you're leading that rich boy lie at the bridge. You're so young, you're so GD young. And she just repeats that. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, probably about 10 times. And then after, you don't love your girlfriend, you don't love your girlfriend. I didn't like it nearly as much as the first song. I mean, it was all right for me. And we'll go to Carbon Monoxide. It says the alt mix on here. I mean, this is the Spotify proper album. So if you know this song really well or something, it's a different mix. That's how it is on Spotify. Carbon Monoxide, I thought the most sophisticated arrangement wise, musicianship wise, right? The beautiful piano. And then it built and built and built. Some illusions of suicide, but really it's about just today's youth being asleep or what the older generation, you guys aren't ambitious enough. Carbon monoxide, soon I'll go to sleep if I don't get my socks on right. They'll slide right off my feet as I walk, 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 walk. Not, not getting into the hustle and bustle of life, right? I'm so cool, I'm so cool. Walk, walk, walk. Come on, daddy, come on, daddy, come on, daddy. Carbon monoxide, soon we'll go to sleep. No one will notice we're gone because we don't have a job to keep. They'll just say that we're being lazy, sex crazy, sex crazy. They'll just say we're living our whole life in bed and we'll be in bed, but we'll be oh so very much. Dead, 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 dead. I don't know. I mean, the things I've read is really not about suicide, but you could definitely take it that way. And then the come on, daddy, come on, daddy. Kind of a haunting song, almost five minutes long. So I like that one. Next up, we have The Flowers. The Flowers. R excellent piano work on the Regina is, is a great piano player. I thought the lyricism was really good. Once again, guys, I don't, the experimental, I'm not even call it experimental. I guess that'd be the word for it. Just the way she switches things up and does different things at random times. I think it took away from the song. I think it's really well written. The piano work was great. Uh, the flowers you gave me are rotting. I still refuse to throw them away. Some of the bulbs may never open quite fully. They might, so I'm waiting and stay awake. The chorus, things I have loved, I'm allowed to keep. I'll never know if I go to sleep. So it's that lost love. She's clinging to that going. There still may be a glimmer of a hope. This is my only memory of this. This reminds me of this person. So that that's kind of what this is all about. I saw in the outro, what she's, what she's kind of singing there, it ends with uh, her vocalizing the melody of Hava Nagila. I'm sure I've said it wrong. A, a Hebrew song traditionally sung at Jewish celebrations. That's a joyous song, which kind of contradicts the lyrics. So that is an interesting touch at the end. Now we're up to the by far most acclaimed song on here, Us. Officially released as a single in 2006, so a few years later, for her UK compilation album, Mary Ann Meets the Grave Diggers and Other Short Stories by Regina Spector. The song is notable for its use of a string quartet in addition to her usual piano and vocals. In 2018, NPR ranked this song as the 72nd greatest song by a female or non-binary artist in the 21st century, saying, NPR said, meeting Regina Spectra through her breakthrough album, Soviet Kitsch, in 2004 was akin to ripping down a long cobblestone street on a bicycle, relishing in the joy of possibility, feeling the texture of history below, and becoming so enchanted you forget there's anything pleasurable at all about a smoother road more traveled. Before family fled to the U.S. as refugees from Moscow, when Spectra was nine, she studied Chopin and Rachmaninoff and was certain she would become a composer. On this song, her small Soviet self meets her Greenwich Village grown up at the corner of classical and whimsical when the word contagious has seven syllables and a piano's 88 keys are stand-ins for infinite expressions of personality. I just thought that was a great quote. I thought it was so descriptive. So well, let's check it out. Us. Okay, this is where everything worked. Right, from her great vocals to the piano work to the strings, like everything worked on this song. And it's it's basically about people making it about them, right? They made a statue of us, put it on a mountaintop, talking about, you know, Stalin. They made a lot of, you know, she's from Russia. Stalin, they made a lot of like bronze things, uh, statues of Stalin, put them on mountaintops and they all rusted out. But that's what she's kind of Talking about living in a den of thieves, rummaging for answers in the pages, living in a den of thieves. And it's contagious, you know, that kind of cult-like personality or that cult-like movement is just, uh, is just contagious. But I thought this was an absolute fantastic song. Now move on to the next track, Sailor Song. Sailor Songs. This is supposedly about the USS Kentucky, which is an unfinished battleship that the U.S. government worked on. They finally sold it for parts in 1958. That does make sense. To a certain extent, all the sailor boys have demons. They sing, oh, Kentucky, why did you forsake me? It was meant to sail the, if I was meant to sail the sea, why did you make me? It should have been another state, oh, state. But it could also just mean about some guys living in Kentucky wishing that they weren't landlocked and they were in the Navy. And then, because Mary Ann's a bitch, you never know. Like somebody on Genius, which I would use for lyrics, but you don't know that they're right. She said it's a joke. Mary Ann is a ship filled with semen, so she's a bitch. Get it? I don't know. I don't know that I get it. Um... 
Does it matter that our anchor couldn't even reach the bottom of a bathtub? It's such a strange job playing blackjack on the deck. So it could mean a landlocked ship like the USS Kentucky. I don't know. I thought the piano playing, and once again, was outstanding. I thought the song was okay. Now we'll get to the next track, which actually just had three asterisks on the original album, but now it's called Whisper. It's just her brother, Bear, who's young, just whispering on this. She said, that was my little brother whispering in a tent we made out of a sound blanket on the studio floor. I'm so glad I get to keep that memory on record. So sweet. So we're going to do that. And then we'll just roll right into the track after that, which is Your Honor, which features Kill Kanata. All right. Whisper, which is just her little brother whispering, when's this next song going to start? That's what he's referencing. It's a cool little thing to probably keep forever. You know, I can see why she did it. And then we get into a punk inspired song, Your Honor. She's doing the da na 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 just to like kind of simulate, I think, a punk guitar or a punk bass line in there. She said, I kissed your lips and I tasted blood. I asked you what happened. You said there'd been a fight. You said, I've been fighting for Your Honor, but you wouldn't understand. I said, hold on, Your Honor. I'll get ice for your hand. Yeah, so I got cool wordplay there. Oh, you've been fighting for my honor and I don't understand, but hold on, Your Honor. I'll get ice for your hand. You said, come on, baby. Let's just make love. It's the only thing to make me better. You said, oh, come on, let's just get you out of that sweater. I said, I don't kiss losers and I don't kiss winners and I don't fight for honor because we're all born sinners. I just thought that was great. And then the chorus, gargle with peroxide, a steak for your eye, but I'm a vegetarian, so it's a frozen pizza pie. You tell me what you care, that you care and you never do lie and you fight for my honor, but I just don't know why. And then doing, Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. You got me and I'm just a common hoe. But now I know what I am and I know what I ain't. So don't get cut because I still won't be no saint. Um, but so, I mean, I thought this was a really well done song. I enjoyed the cleverness of, of simulating the punk sound in there and some very clever lyrics. All right, we only got three songs left. We got Ghosts of Corporate Future. Ghost of Corporate Future. I thought that was really well done. I thought the songwriting was good. She sounded really good. The piano work was fantastic. Basically warning this guy, just like if you if you know a Christmas Carol, Dickens a Christmas Carol, seeing she's he's this guy seeing the ghost of corporate future it starts out and he's got his umbrella and he's got his suit and he's trying to, you know, keep it from getting wet so he looks good going into the office. Because last night he got a visit from the ghost of corporate future. The ghost said, Take off both your shoes, whatever chances you get, especially when they're wet. He also said, Imagine you go away on a business trip and when you come back home. Your children have grown and you never made your wife moan. Both those things are self-explanatory. In other words, it's an epidemic. I mean, women deal with this, but guys especially deal with this. They get lost in their jobs, climbing the corporate ladder, money, power, and they wake up one day and their kids are grown and their wife is gone and they got nothing in for what? For some money and some possessions? Who cares at the end of the day? Anyway, end of my rant. So he does kind of like pivot and people make you nervous. You think the world was ending and everybody's features have some how it started blending and everyone is plastic and everyone's sarcastic and all your food is frozen. It needs to be defrosted. You think the world was ending right now. Maybe you should drink a lot less coffee, maybe, and never ever watch the 10 o'clock news, right? Cause it's doom and gloom on the news or lick a rock or both. Maybe you should cut your own hair because that'd be so funny. It doesn't cost any money and always grows back. Hair even grows back after you're dead, which it actually doesn't cause for hair to grow, glucose has to burn. For glucose to be made, you got to have oxygen. You don't have any oxygen anymore. People think people that people's hair grows once they passed away. It doesn't. The skin around dries up and shrinks. The hair doesn't grow. There's your macabre uh, fact of the day, boys and girls. People are just people that shouldn't make you nervous. The world is everlasting. It's coming and it's going. And if you kiss somebody, then you both get practice. And it's telling him all the stuff to do. And the very end, the world is everlasting. It's coming and going. I thought a really well-written song and a great message. Now we got Chemo Limo. Chemo Limo, an indictment. For those of you that aren't in the United States, I know some of you, it's so hard for you to wrap your head around this because it should be, right? The indictment of the healthcare system in America where for a lot of stuff that you have, if you have money and you have insurance, you're going to be okay. And if you don't, you're going to die. And cancer is one of those things. Now, we never know what's going to happen with cancer anyway. But the chemo limo, right? So she has a choice in this. She has no, uh, I'm assuming she's a single mother. She has four kids. It's kind of dealt out there. And, uh, you know, she doesn't have any money anyway. But if she did, she'd choose a limo. She'd choose an experience so she could go out in style rather than the chemo. And that, that's just kind of what it is. She, 
she just talks about, I had a dream, crispy, crispy, Benjamin Franklin came over and babysit all four of my kids. So money, right? So, you know, and in the dream, the doctor told you, you'll be okay. Just, he just lied to her. It's not going to be okay. It was kind of strange, the change-ups in here towards the end with about, about four minutes in. It's six minutes long. She, just, she did some change-ups in here that I just, it was frustrating to me because I'm like, ah. And I know maybe some of you that love her, that's what you love about it. But if she would have just kept playing this thing kind of down the middle like she was doing, it's still a really good song, but that just took away from it slightly. But a, uh, a great subject matter. We're on to our final track, Some Days. Some Days, what a beautiful performance. What a great way to end this album. Basically, it's Regina on the piano with a little bit of strings on there. And she's talking about her depression or bipolar, kind of one or the other. Some days aren't yours at all. They come and go as if they're someone else's days. They go and leave you behind someone else's face. And it's harsher than yours and it's colder than yours. They come in all quiet, sweep up, and when they leave, you don't hear a single floorboard creak. They're so much stronger than the friends you try to keep by your side. And of course, downtown, downtown, I'm not here anymore. Not anymore. I've gone away. Don't call me. Don't write. So, I mean, a heartbreaking song uh, for sure, but a beautiful song. So what a nice way to finish this album. And that's going to get me into my favorite tracks. Honorable mention, I'm going to go Ode to Divorce and Chemo Limo. Faves Us, Your Honor, Ghost of Corporate Future, and this song, Some Days. Now I get to my overall score. Now I had a lot of honorable mentions and favorites on an 11-track album, but as you listen to the review, you're going to see, I mean, I'm honest, right? I mean, there's there's some of this stuff that just doesn't work for me. Um, and you might be going, man, the old guy just wants it straight down the middle. It's not that. I like experimental stuff. It's just, I can hear just the talent in Regina. And some of that change-up stuff, sometimes it seems like it's forced or it doesn't need to be there. I don't know. But uh, I did enjoy the album. But because there's some misses on here and some things that I think could be so much better, I'm going to be right at a 7 on this, which is still a really good grade. And as it started out, I didn't think I was going to be at a 7 on it. But she's really talented. I know she has several albums after this. So let me know what you guys think of this album. Let me know how off you think I am on my take. I can take it. Uh, your favorite songs off of it and what else I should listen to of hers. Thanks to Shane for bringing this one. Until next time, guys, I will see you.